Good day everyone. Thanks for joining. I know it's been a while since I've created a video and I would like to also thank you for hanging around. I would like to continue our journey of the various types of retention labels used within Microsoft 365. Previously we discussed retention policies and retention labels. Remember that retention policy and labels to an extent are based on when documents were created or last modified. Retention label can take things a little bit further and retain content based on when the label was applied to the content. In this video, we will discuss a fourth type of trigger for a retention label, the event. An event-based label lets you step outside the standard date-based retention and dive into situations that don't deal with dates. In a document's life cycle, your retention trigger could be when an employee no longer works for the company. Perhaps you contract with vendors and triggers based on the contract expiry. Maybe your financial documents are based on an organization's fiscal year end. These situations cannot be handled by create or modify date, and this is where event-based retention comes in. An event-based label allows you to customize how your content is triggered for the retention countdown. I won't say the possibilities are endless, but you certainly have a lot of options available to you. Obviously, an event-based retention label is more complex than your date-based retention labels. There is some preparation that has to be done to ensure your event-based retention labels function properly. This is because the event is actually based on queries run in the system. And these queries use Microsoft's KQL or Keyword Query language to properly trigger the events for the content. In order for your triggers to work, you need to have the metadata set up to allow the query to find your content and start the retention countdown. This video is set up to help you prepare for an event-based retention um, by showing you how to create your metadata link your metadata to manage properties, and testing to make sure things are configured properly. In our next video, we'll put it all together and build out an event-based re retention label system. So let's get started. When dealing with metadata for tenant level activities like auto apply labels or event-based labels, it's best practice to create the metadata at the top level within the content type gallery. This is previously known as the content type hub. So we're going to start in the SharePoint Admin Console today. Next we're going to click on Content Services and then Content Type Gallery. Now we want to create a new content type. The purpose of this is for us to create a base content type for any location we're going to be doing records management within. If this means across the entire organization, then this is definitely the place to do it. Once we have created the content type, we want to add our site columns. Microsoft still hasn't fixed the space issue when creating site columns. What I mean here is that Microsoft has set the interface up for sites that if you put a space in your site name, it removes the space in the URL. They haven't yet replicated this in the site columns. So if you create site columns with a space, the name at the back end, also known as the static name, has the space represented as X, 200 with underscores on both sides. The user doesn't see this, but it is a bit ugly when dealing with code or configuring columns that look at the static name rather than the display name. So we're going to first create our columns with no space. And then update the columns with spaces. To do that, you need to edit the column in classic mode. You can see here that I have included both the document status and the document type in my base content type. This is for a couple of reasons. The document status will be used for event-based retention. The document type will be used later when I demonstrate auto-apply retention labels. We want to publish the content type so it can be used by our libraries. Next, we're going to go to our site collection. We're going to create our first records management based content type within. Once you're within the site, click on the settings cog and select site permissions and then advanced permission settings. Once within the site permissions page, click on site collection administrators in the ribbon. For this time only, we're going to add the user who's updating the site collection and metadata directly as a site collection administrator. Even though my account is a global admin and an owner of the group behind the SharePoint site, there is a bug. At least during the creation of this video, the bug was still there. To explain the nature of the bug, I should pause here and first explain what my end goal is here. What I'm trying to do is make my site column show up as a crawled property. In SharePoint search, there are two key components, the managed property and the crawled property. 
Every piece of metadata in SharePoint, from pre-existing columns to custom columns created by yourself, create a crawled property in the back end. A crawled property is the data added to the search index to allow you to find your content. So when you create custom columns, it adds your column to the index through the crawl property. The manage property is a more powerful version of this. With the manage property, you can now sort, query, build refiners, and all the other powerful features of search. But your custom columns aren't automatically added as a manage property. We need to map a crawled property to a managed property. This effectively binds them together for searching. We need the managed property for our KQL queries to find the data we need. And this brings us back to the bug I mentioned. The bug that exists is for the group enabled sites. Even if you are the owner, if you create a custom column, it won't show up as a crawled property. The crawled property does get created, so that part of search will function but the property doesn't show up in the search schema that I'm going to show you here soon. The end result is that you are unable to map it to a managed property. By adding the user directly as a site collection administrator, we get around this bug and the site column is added to the search schema as we require. Next, we're going to create a new content type based on the demo content type we created in the gallery. This is to demonstrate creating a base content type with the foundation you require for records management by customizing it at the site. So click on that settings cog again and select site settings. Next, click on the site content type. And let's create a new content type that will be utilized by users of the library. Once you have given the content type a name, and if you choose a description and category, Next, select the base content type created earlier and click Create. If other site columns are needed, you can do that now. Once that's done, go back to the library. Once you're back at the library you wish to add the content type to, we're going to add that content type. This is going to allow us to move on to the next stage of the process. Microsoft has updated the way we can add content types to a library and actually have now saved us a few clicks as we no longer have to enable content type customization in the library before we add the custom content types. So click on the Add column drop down arrow and then select Content Type. From the drop down, select the content type we have just created within the site and click Apply. Next, we want to remove the default content type. This isn't something that is required, I just prefer doing this so it doesn't cause confusion or missing fields in our content. So click on the settings cog and select library settings. In the content type section, click on document and then click on delete this content type. Now that the library is configured, we need to add some content and set a value in the site column we will be using later. This is because the site column is not added to the search index until there is content within it. So let's add a file, put a little text into it, rename it, which isn't actually necessary, but I always do this, and then exit the document. Next, we're going to set the metadata of the column we need to use later. Now the data is set and should be picked up by the next SharePoint search, but we're not sure when that particular index is going to run. So we're going to force the index to rescan the entire site to ensure our new site column is picked up. Click the settings cog and select site information and then site settings. Under the search category, click on search and offline availability. Click on the button reindex site. When prompted, Click Reindex Site again. Now we have to wait for a few minutes for the next search index to run and pick up our changes. While we are waiting, I'll explain more why we did all this. If you create a site column at the site only, it only gets added to the search schema of the site collection. The crawled property won't be available at the tenant level search schema. As a result, 
you won't be able to map the crawled property to a tenant level managed property and the KQL will not find your data. I actually ran into this with a client where the site column didn't exist at the content type gallery and as a result, we, when we added it to the search schema, it only existed at the site collection. SharePoint search found our data using the query, but the tenant level search didn't. So since then, when I know a column is going to be used for records management, I always have the site column created first at the tenant level. Okay, let's see if our site column is added to the schema yet. Let's go back to the SharePoint admin page and click on more features. In the more features page, click on open within the search section. Click on the manage search schema. Now click on the crawled properties tab. Perform a search for the internal name of your column without spaces. If it is found, click on it. The property name we want is always going to begin with OWS underscore and then the name of the column. If you created the column as a managed metadata column, there will be multiple results with similar names. But the one that we want is OWS underscore and the name of the column. Once in the crawled properties configuration page, click on add a mapping. Search for refinable string 10 or any other available refinable string that hasn't been used yet below refinable string 100. And then click OK. And then click OK when back on the main screen. And now we have mapped our crawled property to a managed property. In this example, I created a new content type and the necessary fields. But if you're adding the records management columns to an existing library, you aren't going to want to create a new content type and remap all of your content. What you can do instead is simply create the base content type as described earlier. And then instead of adding the content type to the library, simply add the site columns created for the content type to the existing content type and update the documents accordingly. I do recommend using the base content type for net new libraries and content, but for the existing libraries and content, you can use this method just fine. Now that we have configured our metadata and managed property, let's test things out to make sure our queries will work when we run them for events. We'll go to the Microsoft Purview console and the address is compliance.microsoft.com. Once on the site, we want to click on the content search along the left hand side. Once on the content search page, click on new search. Content search isn't your normal search window as you can see. It is a feature of Microsoft 365 and is an artifact you create and can rerun as necessary. So let's give it a meaningful name and description. Since we are only going to be searching in SharePoint, we can toggle on that location. And to make the search quicker, let's point it at the site we are setting up for records management. We don't need to worry about the on-premises users. We are going to type in the KQL directly. So select the KQL editor and type in the query refinable string 10 colon quotation PROJ 123 quotation. Do not worry about the error reported on the pages editor. This is because we are using a value or field not known to the search query page. It will allow us to continue on, which is what we shall now do. Next, we're going to review our settings and click Submit. You'll be brought back to the content search screen and notice your query is there. It should be in the state of starting. Refresh it periodically until it is completed. Once the search indicates it is completed, you can click on it for results. If you haven't granted your account reviewer status, you won't be able to see the results, but you will at least be able to see the number of items returned. If you don't have any results, or you have lots of results, then you likely need to refine your query. If, however, your query returns exactly what you're looking for, then you know things are set up correctly and we can move on to setting up the event-based retention. In this case, we can see there's a single item found, which is exactly what we're looking for. So that's all for now. My next video will cover creating an event label, adding it to content, initiating an event, 
and all the results. Thanks for watching.